This is actually a really interesting comparison because we kind of have the first LR3, like one of the early ones, 2006. Yeah. We also have one of the early ones of the Land Cruiser 200 series. 200 series, right. On this episode, we're gonna find out which Overland SUV is best for towing. That's right, we have a 2008 Toyota Land Cruiser that we've customized ourselves and we have a 2006 Land Rover LR3. Both of them are very good off-road. Well, let's take them on the highway, do a zero to 60 with a trailer and figure out what's what. This LR3 has an aftermarket hitch. Usually um, it's using a European style hitch that's hidden under here. But in this case, uh, it has an aftermarket kind of US style hitch, which is a lot easier to use. And we can put multiple different hitch connectors here and we're using Gen Y hitch today. The Land Rover has an independent suspension system with air. And I'm pleased to see that it actually leveled itself out after I put about what, 500 pounds of tongue weight on this SUV. And the hookup was really easy. Easy to hook up the chains here and just right. Let's talk about towing because the Land Cruiser can tow up to 8,500 pounds. The Land Rover, 7,700 pounds. Now both these vehicles are obviously built for off-roading, but they're very different in terms of how they go about doing it. What we did was we augmented the Toyota and the previous owner of the Land Rover augmented this vehicle just a little bit. With the Toyota, we added tires, wheels, a suspension lift, a snorkel, and some really beefy rock sliders, among other things. With the Land Rover, well, you can tell that he's added components like a snorkel, like this front end piece, like the rear ladder. He definitely added enough to make it a little bit more off-road worthy. The thing is, is that both these vehicles are already heavy and these additions make them a little heavier. Thanks to our friends at Trans West for making this comparison possible. And today we're towing this three horse Cimarron trailer that you could find here at Trans West. The weight of this all aluminum trailer with everything it has on it is around 4,600 pounds. So we're putting some weight behind these big SUVs. Let me show you around the trailer really quick. It has a saddle rack. It has an additional water tank in here and a spare tire. And check out Trans West using the link below for your truck, trailer, and RV needs. Neither of these SUVs is really purely built for towing. I mean, they're more off of focus, right? Yeah, but when you look at what they're built, you know, what's underneath, then the Toyota is much more of a truck. Right? Yeah, it has it solid is. rear axle. It's really based on a truck platform. Yeah, well, let's see how this, you know, air suspension deals with this, right? Because it's supposed to be comfortable, right? Yeah, and so far it's not. <laughs> We're feeling these bumps. Yeah, I know. It's about 14 years old now. Yeah, and it's lived a hard life. I mean, it's been off road a lot, and granted, they're built to go off road, but. When you start taking vehicles off-road, sometimes things will no longer be as um, precisely screwed down as they initially were. All right, dude, so zero to 60 coming up. So I would guess 20 seconds? Yeah, I would say anywhere between 20 to 22 seconds. Back in the day, these two SUVs competed against each other and they still compete. And under the hood of this LR3 is a 4.4 liter gas V8 at 300 horsepower and 315 pound-feet of torque and it's made it to a six-speed automatic transmission just like in the Land Cruiser and this is the most powerful engine at the time in the LR3 let's see how it does okay zero to 60 with the trailer closed road here we go okay leisurely some power. Yep, not even 50 yet. Okay, there we go. 
20.7. See that? It's a good test of the brakes, too. Well, there you go. Not bad for an old vehicle that really wasn't built to be a tow rig. So how did this thing perform on their speed with the trailer? First of all, it did better than I expected. Okay. Uh, I expected a little bit more sway, even at 60 miles per hour. Not a lot of sway, and that surprised me. Interesting. Yeah, braking worked just fine. I mean, obviously we have you know the brake controller, but that wasn't much of an issue either. It was a lot better than I expected. The Cellar 3 is one of our project vehicles and we bought it with this trailer brake controller already installed but it is kind of low and hard to reach from the driver position so eventually we'll relocate it so it's easily accessible. Nathan, we have a small issue. Yeah, we're a little too high, bro. Yeah, so the Land Cruiser has about two inch left and this is as big of a drop as we have today. I thought it should be just fine. Um, so how about this? I'm gonna put my weight on this uh -huh. as you back up. So hopefully we can get it hooked up. This is as high as the trailer goes. Oh, uh, I see, okay. Uh, sounds safe. Hey there. Yeah. All right, folks, do not try this at home, okay? Okay, back up slowly. Again. Stop! Work? Yep. The Land Cruiser is wired for an aftermarket brake controller for the trailer, but we're using this Prodigy that we've bought, and it mounts on a trailer actually, and it uses a remote control, but still has the same function. It actuates the brakes on the trailer, so let's hook it up. Trailer brake controller, I'm assuming, is working. It's working yeah. really good, actually. Okay. This is the wireless one, right? Yep, it is the wireless one. Oh, yeah, this thing's much happier. Really, already? Oh, yeah. It doesn't really register that there's much back there. Acceleration's it's a little bit more effortless. It's, yeah, it's not as muted. This but is actually a really interesting comparison because we kind of have the first LR3, like one of the early ones, 2006. Yeah. We also have one of the early ones of the Land Cruiser 200 series. 200 series, right. And they're both three-row SUVs, pretty much full sizers. Yeah, well, you know, keep in mind, this is a similar engine to the one they're using currently inside of the Tundra. Absolutely. And that is a strong engine. Yeah. It's, it's a beefy, strong engine. This is a 200 series Land Cruiser, and under the hood is a 5.7 big burly gas V8 with a factory rating of 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque, and it's made it to a six-speed automatic transmission. This engine should be plenty powerful to tow a considerable trailer. All right, dude, well, let's do the zero to 60s. What do you think, a little bit quicker than 220? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say it's at least a second faster. Really? Okay, I'm gonna go more extreme. Right. I'm gonna say you're gonna do a 17 and a half, so two and a half seconds. Okay. Maybe three seconds. Maybe three seconds. Okay. Wow. That's okay. what I'll say. Okay, that's what you'll say. Okay. All right. Land Cruiser, zero to 60 with the trailer. Here we go. Yeah. Interesting when it shifted into second gear, it dropped a little bit, but otherwise it's been a lot quicker. Oh, this is gonna be a faster time. Well, wow, Andre was right on the money. 17.55. 17.55 seconds. Wow, not bad. Cools like a freight train. Really did a great job. I like it. So how was the higher speed stability in this one? Better. Okay. I didn't even know anything was back there. I mean, look, the Rover did great. This did better okay. in every measurable way. Well, I guess the truck underpinnings in the solid rear axle and just better power in this one uh, won the day, huh? Oh, by the way, what do you think about the mirrors? The mirrors, 
much better in this vehicle. I still would like to get extensions if I was going to do this long term, but for short around town driving, I can actually see down the sides of the trailer. So what's the verdict? Which of these used overlanders is better at towing? Land Cruiser. Well, yeah, I, of course, it's faster, it's more stable. But you know what? Huh. I would actually take the Land Rover. Because you have problems. No, but, no, because it was easier to hitch up. It's leveled itself. Oh, for the, crying the, out loud, the, the, the one little thing that you always get stuck doing that nobody else has to do, I can understand why you have a love for this vehicle. But otherwise... Also, there is a second reason. Okay. Price. This 2008 Land Cruiser is about 25 to 28,000 bucks. <laughs> the Land Rover, seven. Yeah, and how much do you spend on the Land Rover progressively over time to maintain it versus the Land Cruiser? Zero. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, come on. I know. Come it, on. Maintenance on the Land Rover could be horrendous. I know people who put on hundreds of thousands of miles on Land Cruisers and they just keep on going. They're really reliable, solid, strong vehicles and it proves to be a pretty good tow vehicle too. And I think the pricing, the used pricing shows that. Yeah, it does. And guys, go back to tfltruck.com for my news, views and real world SUV towing reviews. See ya.